हेलो ऑल आई एम स्वाति पी के असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स एंड कम्युनिकेशन इंजीनियरिंग वेद व्यासा इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी आई एम हियर टू प्रेजेंट अ टेक टॉक ऑन एटॉमिक एमिशन स्पेक्ट्रोमेट्री एटॉमिक एमिशन स्पेक्ट्रोमेट्री इज अ स्टैंडर्ड मेथड फॉर मेटल एनालिसिस it a part of sample is vaporized and thermally excited to the point of atomic emission the energy required for these processes is supplied by an electric arc or spark or by laser or plasma composed of inert gas atomic spectrum emitted by a sample is used to determine its elemental composition and the wavelength at which intensity measurement is made identifies the element whereas in intensity of emitted radiation qualifies its qualifies its concentration now talking uh, let's look into the instrumentation of aes they are main major main, mainly classified into three types first is the sample device and source second is the spectrometer then third is the detector and readout devices now let's look into the sample device and sources used first one is the direct current plasma second one is the inductively coupled plasma third one is the microwave induced plasma uh, along with these three Uh, uh sources nebulizers and electrothermal vaporizers are also used to produce a strong atomic emission from all chemical elements temperature must be very high temperatures in the range of 7000 to 14000 kelvin can be obtained by generating an inert gas plasma There are three versions of plasma generation. First one is the direct current plasma generation method. Second one is the inductively coupled plasma generation. Third one is the microwave induced plasma generation. Now let's look into the direct coupled direct current plasma. in direct current plasma or dcp the external source of energy is a dc electric source the most recently developed dcp is the three electrodes dcp or inverted y shaped plasma it has two anodes uh, set at an induced is uh, set at an included angle of about uh, 60 degree and a cathode An anode is made up of graphite and is surrounded through ceramic sleeves. A cathode block consists of a little tungsten electrode also surrounded by a ceramic sleeve. The argon gas is introduced through the sleeves around the anodes and transfers the discharge to the cathode block. The sample in the form of an aerosol is introduced at a rate of about 2 cm cube per minute below the in- intersection of the two anodic columns a spectral observation region is is only just below this in- intersection now coming into the inductively coupled plasma A typical plasma source is shown in the figure. The argon flow is represented by the green arrow. A sample flow is re- indicated by blue arrow. Initially, argon gas will pass through the quartz tube and exit from the tip. The tip of the quartz tube is surrounded by induction coil that create a magnetic field. The AC current that flows through the coils is at a frequency of about 30 megahertz and a power level of around 2 kilowatt 
The stream of argon gas that passes the coil has been previously seeded with free electrons from a Tesla discharge coil. The magnetic field excites these electrons and they then have sufficient energy to ionize the argon atoms by colliding, it with, colliding with them. The cations and anions present from the initial Tesla spark accelerate due to the magnetic field in a circular path that is perpendicular to the stream exciting from the top of the quartz tube. By reversing the direction of the current in the induction coil, the magnetic field is also reversed. This changes the direction of the excited cations and anions which causes more collision with the argon atoms. This results in further ionization of argon atoms and intense thermal energy. As a result, a flame-shaped plasma forms on top of the torch. Now we are going to the nebulizers used. First one is the cross flow nebulizer. A cross flow nebulizer is a type of pneumatic nebulizer. The operation of cross flow nebulizer is often compared to that of a perfume atomizer. Here a high speed stream of argon gas is directed perpendicular to the tip of the capillary tube. The solution is either drawn up by drawn up through the capillary tube by the low pressure region created by the high speed gas or forced up the tube with the pump. In either cases, in either case Contact between the high speed gas and the liquid stream causes the liquid to break up into an aerosol. Cross flow nebulizers are generally not as efficient as at creating the small droplets needed for ICP analysis. However, the larger diameter liquid capillary and longer distance between liquid and gas injectors minimize clogging problems the another advantage of this nebulizer is they are that they are generally more rugged and corrosion resistant than glass concentric nebulizers now coming into the second type of nebulizer babington nebulizer A type of pneumatic nebulizer used for ICP or OES is the Babington nebulizer that allows a film of sample solution to flow over a smooth surface having a sm small orifice. High speed argon gas from the hole shears the sheet of liquid into small droplets. The essential features of this type of nebulizer is that the sample solution flows freely over a small aperture rather than passing through a fine capillary resulting in a high tolerance to dissolve solids. In fact, even slurries can be nebulized with a Babington nebulizer. This type of nebulizer is the least susceptible to clogging and it can nebulize very viscous liquids also. And that's all today. Thank you.